For the last 50 plus years I have been teaching and problem solving to figure out this particular Aston theory or the Aston paradigm. And I'm so happy to share these ideas with you. But since I cannot see you or see your limitations in your body motions or hear your comments, I must ask you to please pay attention to your body. So if you see me just raise my arm like this, but since your rotator cuff injury, you know your arm only goes this far before it starts to hurt. Please don't get caught up in the moment and try to reach as I might have demonstrated as one possibility. Always edit the amount that you do by what feels comfortable, what feels safe, and it's easier to go with moderation first and then increase if you want to reach a little bit further, and so on and so forth. This particular uh, piece of information I'm giving you, I want you to pay attention to on any of the videos that you might follow on Aston Kinetics. Okay, here we go. Contrary to all the negative publicity, that sitting has received over these last few months. You know, sitting kills us, sitting is the new smoking, etc., etc. I find that if people know how to sit, how to use their body in a chair, and how to modify the chair to fit their unique body, sitting is a good thing. Standing is a good thing. Walking is a good thing. Running is a good thing. And we have ideas to pass along to you on all of those subjects. Today is about sitting. sitting. So let's start off with me sitting in this chair so that I have the approximate 90, 90, 90 degree alignment. And I'm just going to relax into the back of this chair. So sit in the chair the way you usually sit in the chair. If that's sitting in the middle of the chair and leaning back, do that. Okay, for this very first part of this pretest, I want you to feel. So in whatever that position is that's familiar to you, please turn your head to the right. Check where that is without swiveling your chair. <laughs> Just turn your head and see what the range is of your neck and head. Turn your head to the left. Check that out. Kind of notice your breathing. Take a few breaths and notice where you feel the movement to your breath. How much volume of breath you're getting. And number three, and lastly, will you raise your arms as though you are working on the computer or on your laptop, onto your, on your lap, but move your hands just a little bit in your arms so you can feel what this position does in how it affects the support for your arms. Second pretest. Move all the way to the back of the chair. Turn your head to the right. Turn your head to the left. Is it the same amount, less or more? Okay. Pause. Check your breathing. Mine is quite labored in this position. And lift your arms and move the fingers about. And lastly, number three, I want you to sit forward on the chair so you're really only sitting on your pelvis, not the back of your legs. I'm going to sit to the front of the seat, okay? Notice what happens immediately when you sit on the front of the chair, where you're sitting only on your pelvis. Something happened to your posture immediately. Notice now when you turn your head, oh my goodness, and turn your head, you have so much more range. Check your breathing, okay? And raise your arms and move your fingers. The first one you did, where you sat in the chair the way you usually sit, and you turned, can you feel the range of motion is different? Can you feel the support for your arms is different? Go back to just sitting on your pelvis, okay? 
Now, one of the things I would recommend that you play with is being able to have a little more support from the chair for the whole body. Mainly, I'm weighted on my pelvis. The weight is out of my feet. I'm sitting at the, still at the 90 degree. I'm going to suggest that you raise the chair so that your pelvis is slightly higher than your knee. Now, you might be able to see with me immediately what that did. Number one, it lengthened my whole trunk. Two, increases my range of motion. Three, it adds weight into my feet, so my feet become part of the base of support for my actions while I am sitting. When I sit in this position where I roll back into the chair, I take my weight out of the feet. People think this is a good idea, but ladies, look at your legs and the width of your legs in this position. The chair pushes out, you see all of this soft tissue that's supposed to be on the back of the leg is kind of bulging out to the side. And then, when you sit forward, the true proportion and position of the tissues around the bones of the leg, in this case the tissues around the femurs, are the true size of the leg. And when I sit back, you'll see all the soft tissue kind of fold out. Now, this affects circulation. So people think that when you take weight out of the feet, you are getting better circulation. This is not better circulation. So look down and see. Try this out. Not that you have to sit this way every day, all day, but you will be surprised how much energy the ideas and the tips I'm giving you now will give you. And by the end of the day, when you've been sitting and kind of dancing while sitting, you're going to be very pleased. One of, one of the other consequences uh, from sitting in a flexed position. So when I sit back here and the legs are being pushed in that position I just demonstrated, the tendency is that the chest will fall. What happens when the chest falls is it often pushes the abdomen and stomach and all the tissue there, whether you have a little amount or a large amount, it shoves it all forward. This affects the breathing, definitely the diaphragm is compressed and pushed up against. The abdomen and your digestion between the stomach and all of the um, digestive parts of the organs are being <laughs> compromised. Okay? The other piece is that when you sit back on a chair without any modification, I'm going to show you modification in a moment, but without any modification, generally, you sit in a hole. The chair is carved out for the, the pelvis and for supposedly relaxing. Okay? When I sit back in that position, and that again suggests that my pelvis roll under, roll under, my chest collapses and I go back. When the body goes into this quote-unquote slump position, what happens is people then have to lift their head and neck to see the screen or to talk to someone when they are sitting. So you have several things going on. This stresses the neck, the shoulders, and starts to go into the upper back. This position compresses the low back. So people think, oh my goodness, I'm leaning on the chair, I'm resting, and therefore this is good for my back. I'm not efforting by having to sit up. This position is not good for the back because it compresses. My chest is pretty far behind my pelvis. Here's my pelvis, here's my chest. Here's my pelvis on the chair, here's my chest on this chair. This is the suggestion. So when you scoot forward, or when I teach you how to modify the chair for sitting back, when you scoot forward, the body is automatically, no coaching, no requirement that you hold effortfully a good posture. Your body just goes into a better position, okay? In this position, I have greater range of motion of my neck and head. In fact, notice how my whole trunk can move and increase my range of motion. 
Secondly, I have much better range for reaching for things at my desk, picking up the phone, uh, working on my computer, etc., etc. I have better breathing capacity, better digestion, and my back is not compressed in this position, and I'm not rounding my shoulders to work on the computer, nor am I lifting my chin up to see the screen. When you're in this position, you are much closer to a neutral position. So I want to introduce you to this very simple exercise that we teach people how to find neutral. And you can do this anywhere. <laughs> this is called Aston Seated Arcing. Simple, simple exercise. And I'm going to teach it to you as just a small movement range. And you can still feel the effect of it. Now, instead of me sitting on this low height, as I mentioned before, I'm going to recommend that you raise your seat so your hip joint is slightly higher than your knee. Okay? And your feet, instead of being out too far, are a little bit back so that your front of your ankle is under your knee. Okay? Good. Now here is the first part of this. It has three parts. It goes into flexion, goes into extension, to find neutral. One, two, three. The first part is this. Put your hands on the top of your crest of your pelvis. Okay, that the bony prominence right there on both sides. Slightly push down. Your thumbs are facing back. Slightly push down and roll your pelvis back. Now notice I'm not leaning back. I'm just letting my pelvis start to roll back a little bit. And then roll it back to where you started. And roll it back down and come up to where you started. So there's just this small micro movement, okay? But what I would want you to notice is you don't have to use the abdominals to contract to do this. You're simply letting the pelvis fall back and down. Notice when you let the pelvis fall back and down, the chest starts to also go down, like it did in that chair, only in this case, it's just following what your pelvis is doing so that your head and your spine all the way to your pelvis are in a slight open C curve, like so. So your head is still in direct alignment with your pelvis and then you come back to where you started. Let's do that again. Allow your pelvis to roll back, let your chest respond and just gently curve. When you get to the bottom, blow with the air out and exhale. Come on out of it and do that one again. Roll your pelvis back. Let your chest melt down. When you get to the bottom, blow the air out. That's the flexion. Two. Will you place your hands, the heel of your hands, right here at the front of the pelvis, on the legs. Lean your whole trunk just slightly forward. Push your feet down into the ground. Push down. Push down with your hands. And that helps traction you up so you can stretch the front of your body really, really long up to the top and come on out of it. Let's do that again. Flexion. Roll the pelvis back and down, melt slowly, blow the air out. Part two, lean forward a little bit to get some weight into your feet. Push down on the feet, push down on the hands, traction your body long in front. When you get to the top, inhale, release the hands, and let your body settle where the front and back are about the same length. Nod your head and see if you can feel your body respond. One, two, three. One. Lean forward, extension. Inhalation, two. Three. Find neutral by settling down and letting the front and back, back of your body be about the same length. Notice I didn't just say settle back. 
that would end you in this position. You want to be in this neutral position so you can decide to get up out of the chair, to reach to the right, reach to the left, or settle back into the chair. Find neutral first. For the next exercise, sitting on the front of your seat, pelvis slightly higher than the knee. What I want you to do is to realize how to use your feet to support the actions all the way through the rest of your body. So right now, many times uh, what happens is if I were to reach for something here and then suddenly I'm about to drop it or the something makes me move quickly to catch it. I am really going to effort my body in order just to hold this really almost light object, but still it caught me by surprise and I have to have a jerk reaction in my body and I go on hold. When I'm going to reach to the right, if I just bring my right foot just even a little bit out and I push on the ground, that stabilizes my body. I could hang out here for a very long time. This object that I'm trying to get could be moving all over the place. I'm going to be fine as long as I'm pushing off the ground. I then can push off the ground again with my right foot to come back to where I started from. I reach to the left. I'm pushing off the left foot into the ground to reach. I push off the left foot to come back. I need to go forward. I bring my foot forward. I bring my foot forward, I bring my foot to the right, I bring my foot forward, I bring my foot to the left. Okay? So your base of support then is coming from the floor and you get extra strength by using this secondary force to gravity called ground reaction force. That is the opposite of gravity pulling us to the center of the earth, the earth's ground is pushing us in the opposite direction. So when you utilize this force, if I push down on my feet, it is very easy to raise my arms. Okay? I push down again to raise my arms. Okay? I push down again to reach forward. I don't push down and I raise my arms. Probably looks different to you. I don't push down. Do you see how pushing down lengthens your body, gives you more stability, so you're actually doing a little bit of a mini toning for the whole body in just a few seconds. So use your feet is the second piece. Neutral. Use your feet for the dance of reaching, bending, etc., etc. And then there's this third piece I want to have you emphasize, and that is keep the body moving. So many times when you walk into an office, and I have worked with many office, offices with the staff here and there, you walk in and the most common thing you see is people sitting in their chair, however low that is, in a certain position holding while their hands are going, or the phone is going, or their headset is going, etc., etc., where all this motion happens in just one area of the body. So right now, what I'd like you to do, put your body on hold, just kind of tighten up everything for a moment, and shake your hands and feel how this reverberation impacts certain places in your body. I have this theory I called, I call, where stillness meets motion creates friction. Over time, that misuse pattern becomes an abuse pattern and starts to break down and injure the joints or create scar tissue in these places where stillness meets motion. So now, feel the difference if when you shake your hands, you can feel that movement all the way to your feet. Go side to side. Can you move? and feel your arms in the rest of your body, your chair, your so on and so forth. Now obviously I'm having you exaggerate. Feel the movement of reaching up, reaching out, reaching forward, reaching down, okay? Now put your body on hold. Reach up, reach forward, reach down. This is an effortful task. So 
whatever it is that you're wanting to do, it could be a very small movement. It's like hitting this, the cursor on your computer. Just by doing that, that tiny little movement, when your body can move with you, you keep it revitalized and energizing all day long because you're hydrating through motion, keeping the body juicy. Okay. Let's... Okay, so now I want to show you how to modify the chair for yourself to work for your body. Okay? Most chairs are so deep, and again, the theory on that is to allow the body to rest back. And the design happens by, from the back of the knee to the back of the chair is what's supposed to support the legs, therefore, the pelvis, and therefore the back. But again, most people don't use it quite like that. They use it more in this position where they're sitting a little bit forward with their pelvis. That makes this back, when I sit in that position, that makes this back too far back for me, so it puts me into the slump. Um, years ago, years ago, I used to modify everybody's car seats <laughs> with duct tape, and, duct tape and foam. But in the meantime, I realized I needed to make hard products so people would have many choices because no two bodies are exactly alike. And depending on how we've used our body through the years, from being a child to an adult to an older adult, the body has certain restrictions from or limitations from injury, skiing, and car accidents, and so on and so forth. So even though we'd like to be sitting in a certain way, we may have a leg that has to be straight because since that particular knee surgery, it, it, um, it uh, swells up too much if we can't have it fairly straight. So that person needs to sit more on the front of the chair, etc., etc. So when a chair is too deep, we have a whole line of products of backs of all sizes. I'm going to use this one right now here, and it has a, a thick end and a thin end. I use it at the top here to support this part of my thoracic spine, yeah? So it puts me more forward instead of most seats, lean back, and the thoracic spine is quite curved. This goes for airplane seats, this goes for car seats, etc., etc. So I would use it to fill in that space. You could use it in an opposite way, and these ties are for tying it onto the seat so that it stays in place and you always have it the way you want it, as opposed to falling out when you get out of the car. If I put the thick end here, which is also beveled, you might be able to see, I could put it at my sacrum if my sacrum needed particularly uh, particular support there, okay? So in this case, this feels really comfortable to me for resting. I'm, I'm sitting back talking, I'm watching television, etc., etc. If I were in a recliner, for example, this would still keep my body in a fairly neutral position. Instead of the more I lean it back, the more it puts me into this slump. Okay. So, so many chairs with this concavity in the design really do put us a little bit too much into just the flexion of the position of the pelvis. And so if we can fill that in, and these are beveled to fit the car seats as well, then what happens is now I can sit back in the chair and can you see that my body is quite supported to be able to work for quite some time. Look at the size of the thighs. They're looking rather normal. Okay? And you have many options. You have a thin back, thick back, a standard back, a thin seat, etc. Um, one of the other things that might work for you is a short seat, that it's only to fill in that area that's most concave, so that that allows me to even feel more upright in this seat, because if it's just lifting my pelvis a little higher than my legs, so my legs can slant down without having all of that uh, width that comes into them. The short seat often fits cars that don't have very much headroom um, for people of a certain height. This is the short seat or the thin beveled standard seat. Okay? 
Sometimes these designs, the ergo triangle seat or the universal pillow are all people need to make an airplane seat work, a car seat work, or an exercise class work. So they would be used here for seating, here or here for the back, or there, depending on where you want it placed. I really find I travel with my ergo triangle all the time on airplanes, car rentals, <laughs> etc., etc. But I also find that this is great for sitting on stools or this type of chair. So you can see how it slants back. Okay? I can just use this. And my legs are free to sit on my pelvis. My legs are free. So it puts me in a neutral position. This is excellent for the floor, for exercise, for yoga class, for sitting on machines at the gym. Okay? So here I am, here in this position, on the floor, reaching, doing whatever I'm doing, rotating, etc., etc. And watch the difference. Here I am. <laughs> I took the support out. Okay, I could self-correct by doing something like this, efforting and lifting myself up. Now everything is tight, but not in a neutral position. So now I'm limited in the range that I can do because I'm running into the positional tension, not the tension of my body. So when I put myself in a better neutral position, I'm just free freed up. The other ones that I just mentioned to you was this universal and this one is just great. I can't go anywhere without this. So many clients now use this for sleeping to fill in the space between the, the head pillow and maybe the knee pillow but often right here is where we need this support. So this is called the universal pillow but it can be used as a pillow for the head. Um, when I had my arm in a sling I had to use a pillow to support my arm at sleep uh, 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 when I was sleeping. Um, it can be used for a stomach pillow and so on and so on. There are so many ways to modify. Sometimes people simply prefer two universal pillows. <laughs> so one for seating and one for the back. I want to talk about just a couple more um, solutions for you for sitting. Uh, this is called our thick seat and it's excellent for exercise, for toning on the floor, um, many aspects of exercise. But sometimes when people have a bench seat uh, in their truck or at the office, they prefer just sitting on a plain old bench, something flat, um, this gives you the thickness in the back and less height in the front so it pitches you a little bit forward and balances out chairs that slant back for example. So many times people will use these on dining room chairs etc. So it gives you just enough of a pitch to play with uh, being able to eat comfortably and so on and so forth. The other thing is that in, in uh, flying uh, often people who are six foot and above really prefer this as their seat of choice when they're traveling. So it has a handle and you can just carry it and tell people, you know, as you're boarding the plane that this is an ergonomic solution for your back. Um, but it just raises you up enough so if you are sitting higher up, your knees aren't running into the seat in front of you as you are when you're sitting low and you have that length. I also want to talk to you about uh, this knee pillow. Now, this is a great one for driving. So often what happens is that people are accelerating with the right leg and crossing to the brake like so and they get into a lot of stress in the hip flexors the squeezing of the knee in this held position and the ankle. Okay, So originally when I designed this it was for the knee to allow people to move more horizontally from the foot 
to, from the accelerator to the brain, having to lift up all the time. And the people that were commuters, oh my goodness, they were so grateful. Because, you know, you drive a few, a second or two, and then you put on the brake, and you drive, and so on and so forth. So this, this helped remedy that. I use it for, um, you can decide if this works for you, but I use it to help me with the uh, being short and having my seat all the way forward. Uh, the seatbelt is somewhat strangling me, and I end up with quite a bit of neck tension, shoulder tension, um, if I don't use this to help neutralize the uh, seatbelt. Um, people can use it for a head pillow, particularly during exercise, etc., etc. And then a very simple solution for any seat where you just want a little bit of support for the pelvis. It's important um, to have some neutralization from the concavity of seat design. This gel seat works. It's quite, it's, it's, it is gel, therefore it's mobile, and it just gives you that hint of support for the pelvis. So notice the difference, me sitting here with just the gel seat, and me sitting without the gel seat, okay? And the only difference is that when the pelvis and the thighs are on the same line, the pelvis rolls under, okay? So this is the same design as my Ergo that um, I designed way back, all of these in 1983. Um, and there's the gel seat. So I'm hoping that this gives you many, many ideas that you do not have to be dictated to by the design of your chair. You do not need an expensive chair. I cannot tell you the number of clients who bring me into their home office with their $1,500 ergonomic top-of-the-line chair, and I still just use one or two wedges, and they go, wow, <laughs> that made it all work so much better. So. I just wanted you to have these ideas and give us a call at Aston Kinetics or write to us at, uh, you know, through our website, uh, astonkinetics.com or through the office at astonkinetics.com. And we'd be happy to hear from you. Okay, I hope this is helpful.